Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day all. Uh, my name is Muhammad Zamri uh, Yusof from School of Mechanical Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, University of Technology Malaysia. So I would like to welcome everyone to our distinguished lecture series. Uh, today, the distinguished lecture series number 92 uh, will be presented by uh, Prof. Uh, Tanimura Masaki from Nagoya Institute of Technology. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank Prof. Tanimura uh, for willing to join this program uh, in the DSL program. Uh, for your information, uh, Prof. Tanimura was my supervisor from my bachelor, master, PhD uh, degree uh, in Nagoya Institute of Technology from 2008 until 2013. Uh, Prof. Tanimura uh, still collaborate with me and many researcher in Malaysia in the field of nanomaterials and, and until uh, now, uh, Prof. Tanimura also occasionally joined the conference here in Malaysia. Uh, but however, due to the COVID uh, pandemic now, uh, he, he cannot uh, come to Malaysia uh, because uh, he like to eat durian in Malaysia. Uh, so I hope that uh, today uh, program will be a uh, benefit for everybody. Uh, without further ado, uh, I would like to uh, pass the screen to Prof. Dato. Mamam Rafiq uh, to introduce Prof. Tanimura Masaki. Uh, thank you, Dr. Zamri. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome everyone to our 92nd UTM Engineering Distinguished Lecture Series. My name is Muhammad Rafiq and I'm the Dean of Engineering, University Technology, Malaysia. Today, it is my utmost pleasure to welcome Professor Masaki Tanimura from Nagoya Institute of Technology, Japan. A bit about our distinguished speaker today. Masaki Tanimura received the PhD degree from Nagoya Institute of Technology, NITEC, Japan. Before joining NITEC, he worked at Toyota Central Research and Development Lab, Aichi, Japan. He has also worked at Bonn University, Germany as an Alexander von Humboldt Fellow. He is currently a professor at NITEC from 2006 and Deputy Head of Department of Physical Science and Engineering from 2019. He was a Director of Instrument and Research Technology Center from 2011 to 2016, a Director of Multi-Energy Innovation Center at NITEC from 2013 to 2019 and Special Advisor to NITEC President for Regional Partnership in Asia from 2016 to 2019. His recent research activities include the synthesis of graphene and the low temperature fabrication of one-dimensional nanomaterials, especially the room temperature growth of carbon nanofibers based on the ion-solid interactions and their characterization using TEM, Transmission Electron Microscope. His interest is also devoted to their applications. In fact, he has commercialized the CNF probes for atomic force microscope. These achievements are published in more than 300 papers in international journals, nine book chapters, and 18 granted patents, including five U.S. granted patents. He was awarded Encouragement Award from Japan Institute of Invention and Innovation in November 2013 and received the prizes for science and technology research category in the Commendation for Science and Technology by the Minister of NEXT in 2015. So that is a brief biography of our distinguished speaker. Here now is Professor Masaki Tanimura from Nagoya Institute of Technology, Japan, with a lecture entitled Challenge to the Controllable and Green Synthesis of Nanocarbons from Nano World to Real World. Professor Masaki Tanimura, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much for your very kind introduction. And I am very happy to uh, give a talk here. So it's my uh, great honor to give a talk here. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. So uh, shall I start or? Yes, Prof, you can start. In this lecture, I will talk about the ion induced nanocarbon on their mechanical and electrical properties and their commercial products. They are my current PhD students. They are my collaborator and colleague. They are my Malaysian ex-students and currently collaborators. This is my favorite in the real world and 
you see the conical structure on the outer peel. This is my favorite in the nether world. Anyway, my interest in the conical structures. They are the family of nanocarbon. Zero dimension is fullerens. One dimension is carbon nanotubes. Two dimensions is graphene. And the stack of graphene is a three-dimensional graphite. For the fabrication of nanomaterials, there are two approaches. One is a top-down approach. Here you see the high-quality graphite, HOPG, and after peeling off by scotch tape many times, you can obtain two-dimensional graphene. By using this method, GAIM won the Nobel Prize. Another approach is the bottom-up approach. A typical example is a chemical vapor deposition, CVD process. In this process, molecules are assembled from the scratch. This is a transmission electron microscope image of multi-wall carbon nanotube. You see the black and white contrast lines. One pair of the black and white lines corresponds to the one layer of carbon nanotube. So, in this case, about 10 layers. You see here the hollow structure. If there is a hollow structure, it is called carbon nanotube. And if there is no hollow structure, it is called carbon nanofiber. Today's talk starts from carbon nanofiber to its transformation to graphene. Today's talk is ion-induced carbon nanofiber, so at first we will check the ion-solid interaction very briefly. Black cycles is an incident ion, so when the incident ion hit the surface, several things happen. One is the backscattering of the incident ions. They are used for the surface analysis. And another thing is the ion implantation of the incident ions. It is very important in the semiconductor industries. Incident ions induce the ejection of the surface component atoms. This process is called sputtering. These sputter ejected particles are used for the thin film deposition and surface analysis. At the surface, cascade collisions are occurred, and in this cascade collision process, surface composition changes, crystalline structure changes, and morphology changes. Such a morphological change occurs even at room temperature. So, I used this ion-induced morphological change as the basic idea of the nanostructure fabrication at low temperature. This is a kind of the challenge to the common sense. Ion irradiation is usually known as a destructive process, but we want to use it as a creative process. This is a typical example of the morphological change induced by ion irradiation. You see the conical structures. They are pointing in the ion incidence direction. This is the conical structures formed on gold surface to detect protein. From the viewpoint of the surface analysis, the formation of conical structure should be avoided for the precise analysis. But for the materials science, it is very interesting and we tried to enhance the morphological change as much as possible. In this systematic investigation, we found that carbon is a very special material. Okay, how to enhance the morphological change? There is a hint in the nature. I took this picture in Switzerland. Here is a headstone, and you see sharp peaks. 
the sharp peaks are created by rain erosion around the durable headstone. This means the headstone acts as a protection against the rain erosion. This is the real world. In another world also, a similar thing happens. Instead of headstones, we can disperse the materials for the protection against the iron erosion. Such a material is called a seed material. This is a typical experimental setup consisting of large-scale iron source, seed metal supply source, and sample stage. For this iron source, we have 3 cm and 15 cm argon iron source. For this seed metal supply source, we use thin film deposition system based on the arc discharge. This is used for the seed metal supply and also the compositional control of the carbon nanofibers. The sample stage is water cooled. Of course, we can heat up the sample up to 500 degrees, but for the carbon nanofiber synthesis, heating is not necessary. We put the sample here. Sample size is up to 20 cm in diameter. We tried various samples such as bulk carbon, carbon coated metals, semiconductors, plastics, nafion, and so on. What is this? This is an isolated carbon nanofiber fabricated on a glassy carbon. You see, the well-known conical structure and one-dimensional carbon nanofiber on it. So, the carbon is very special material. Such a fiber grows very easily only for carbon. This is the mechanism of the carbon nanofiber growth. Any substrate is okay. We use carbon coated any kind of substrate. During ion irradiation, well known conical structure grows. Then the redeposition of sputta ejected carbon atoms onto cones. Then the surface diffusion of the redeposited carbon atoms toward the cone tips to grow the carbon nanofibers. The carbon nanofibers grow without any catalyst and intentional heating. So, this is a room temperature process. Of course, if we supply any metals and semiconductors during the carbon nanofiber growth, we can control the composition of carbon nanofibers. But first, we will check the mechanical property. For this purpose, we use scanning electron microscopy SEM system. Two probes are installed in the conventional SEM system like this. This is the top view image of the probes. The carbon nanofiber sample is attached to one of the probes and the counter electrode is attached to another probe. The motion of the probes is controlled by piezo. This is the system assembly. We can measure the electrical property of the sample also using this system. We can select the sample position by observing the SEM image like this. This is a setup for the measurement of the mechanical property. Here is a carbon nanofiber grown on the AFM cantilever. This is also the cantilever, but very soft cantilever to measure the force acting on the carbon nanofiber. This is the force constant of this soft cantilever. We can calculate 
the force acting on the carbon nanofiber from the displacement U of the soft cantilever using the well-known equation F equal KU. We will start the measurement. The carbon nanofiber is still linear in shape. Here, buckling occurs. From this displacement U, we can calculate the force acting on the carbon nanofiber by the equation F equals KU. We release the force, the carbon nanofiber becomes linear in shape again, like the initial shape. From this experiment, we can calculate the Young's modulus E by using Euler equation. You know, this Euler equation is usually used for the calculation of a huge pillar of the building. It is interesting. Such an equation in real world is also useful in the nano world. The carbon nanofiber on the AFM cantilever was prepared like this. If we do this picture upside down, this reminds us of the AFM probe. The carbon nanofiber grows only on the sharp tip. AFM probes have sharp tip originally, so the carbon nanofiber should grow on it. And the carbon nanofiber grows in the ion beam direction. This means we can control the growth direction. So let's try. This is the ion source. Very simple. Just the filament to emit electrons. Here, magnet to enhance the electron trajectory and electrode. Argon ions comes like this. If we put the cantilever like this, the carbon nanofibers grow like this. And if we put the cantilever like this, the carbon nanofibers grow like this. This is an array of the cantilever. This is a close-up image here. Here you see the lever and chip. They are the magnified image. This is a front view image and side view image. And this is a further enlarged image. You see the carbon nanofiber is linear in shape and the length is about 800 nanometer. Of course, we can control the growth direction like this. This is already commercialized and is available also in Malaysia. And I received the science prize from Minister of Next Japan. What is the performance? In the semiconductor industries, the analysis of deep trench is important. For example, this is a standard silicon grating. If we use conventional triangular AFM probe, the obtained AFM image is not precise like this. But if we use carbon nanofiber probe, the image should be rectangular like this. In fact, the measured profile is like this. You see the sharp edge and the symmetric profile. We can observe such a sharp image 
after repeated scans for 90 minutes. So, carbon nanofiber has very long lifetime. This is an image of DNA measured in water. The scan speed is 5 seconds for this one flame. Usually, it takes a few minutes for one flame imaging, so this is very rapid scan. They are second and third imaging of the flame here. You can see the helix turns of the double strand DNA clearly. So, the carbon nanofiber probe is very suitable also for the imaging of soft materials and biomaterials. What about the electrical property? Of course, we can measure the electrical property in the scanning electron microscope, previously used for the measurement of mechanical properties. But crystalline structure change induced by the electron current flow will be interesting. So we installed the special sample holder in transmission electron microscope system to measure the electrical property and we observed the transformation from amorphous carbon to graphene and amorphous carbon to carbon nanotubes. Today, I will show you some examples. Nowadays, Graphene is one of the most interesting materials. Many researchers want to achieve the controllable growth of high-quality graphene at lower temperature directly on the substrate in mass production. Chemical vapor deposition, CVD, is the powerful tool for the graphene synthesis and Tackling to tune the growth parameter to achieve this goal is very important. Of course, we are doing this optimization, sometimes by using such a funny carbon source like waste polymers and chicken fat. Actually, very high quality single layer graphene glows using those carbon sources like this. Besides this, we want to know what happens during graphene growth. For this purpose, in-situ transmission electron microscope is very powerful and carbon nanofiber is very suitable for this purpose. This it's a case of copper included carbon nanofiber case. You know, copper is known as a typical catalyst for the graphene growth in CVD. So, the transformation from amorphous carbon to graphene will be expected. This is a SEM image. Relatively thick carbon nanofibers grow, and we put this sample in system and apply the voltage. This is a TEM image before applying the voltage. Black dots disperse in the carbon nanofibers. Those black dots are copper nanoparticles. We can observe copper lattice like this. Then we apply the voltage. Here is a tungsten counter electrode. By increasing the applied voltage, evaporation of copper nanoparticles occurs and yielding relatively transparent nanowire. This is a graphene nanowire. After the transformation, we observed TEM in detail. You see the agglomeration of small graphene flakes. The graphene flakes are about pre-layer graphene. This is 
the current voltage characteristics. This is the applied voltage, and this is the time scale, and this is the current. At the beginning, current increases very slowly with an increase in voltage, but suddenly the current steeply increases. And just after this steep current increase, structure change occurs. This is also the current voltage characteristics before and after the formation of graphene nanowire. Before the graphene nanowire formation, the obtained current was about 0.4 microampere. But after the graphene nanowire formation, about 27 microampere was achieved and about 150 microampere was achieved by further increase in voltage for only one carbon nanofiber. We are now planning to use this for the interconnection application. This is a cartoon of the all carbon electrical circuit proposed by Japanese group. Here is graphene interconnection and here is a wiring using carbon nanotubes. For those interconnection applications, position control of the nanocarbon is very important and transformation of carbon nanofiber to graphene nanowire will be promising. The problem is the flake size. The flake size of graphene is still too small because the graphitization started from copper nanoparticles. So we tried formation of larger flake size of graphene. This is copper coated carbon nanofiber case. Carbon nanofiber was covered with thin copper film and applied the voltage. You see, with increasing the voltage, the movement of copper thin film occurs. Here, you see the increase in the transparent area and shrinking thin film. Here becomes thicker. This relatively transparent wire is graphene nanowire and flake size is larger than previous one. This is the current voltage characteristics with typical images of the structure change. Similar to the copper included carbon nanofiber case, at the beginning, the current increases very slowly and suddenly steeply current increases. And then the structure change occurs like those. This is the enlarged image of the graphene nanowire. The graphene nanowire consisted of about three layers of graphene and the domain size is larger than the copper included carbon nanofiber case. This is a TEM image of platinum nanoparticle case. For platinum nanoparticle, after the movement of platinum, transformation from amorphous to carbon nanotube occurs. Images A, B, C are the enlarged images of those A, B, C respectively. Here is a carbon nanotube formed after the movement of platinum nanoparticles. Here you see platinum nanoparticle and here is a broken part. Then we will try the soldering of this broken part by using the movement of platinum nanoparticle. D 
this is a broken part. At first, we attached them mechanically and applied a negative voltage on this side and a positive voltage on this side. So the electrons flow from downside to upper side. The platinum nanoparticle tries to move from this side to this side. This is due to the electron migration. In this process, tiny electrons push the nanoparticle from left to right side. After the movement, the broken part was seamlessly connected. This is the soldering of nanoregion. This is an electrical property before and after nanosoldering. While the platinum nanoparticle tries to go to another side, the current goes up and down irregularly. And after the formation of seamless connection, the current increases smoothly with an increase in voltage. We are also trying the low temperature graphitization. This is not the carbon nanofiber, but the case of carbon thin film. And the cobalt nanoparticles are dispersed in the film. This is as deposited film at room temperature. The average size of the cobalt nanoparticles is about 2 nanometer. This is a DEM image of the film. You see the mixture of the black and white contrast. The black contrast corresponds to the cobalt nanoparticles and white contrast region is a carbon matrix. This shows an enlarged image of the box A, indicating the cobalt lattice of 002 plane. At around and in between cobalt nanoparticles, short range fringes are observable. Their spacing is about 0.345 nanometer, which corresponds to the graphite 002 plane. So, the very localized graphitization occurs even for as deposit film at room temperature. In the electron diffraction pattern, we observe graphite 002 ring and several spots from cobalt and cobalt oxide. These are macroscopic evidence of the graphitization for the as deposited film. By XRD and Raman analysis, we confirmed the graphite-related peaks. And in the chemical bonding analysis by X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, XPS, we observed the graphene-related sp2 peak here. Why the graphitization occurs even at room temperature? The trick is the metal nanoparticles. They have enhanced catalytic activity in the graphitization. This is a mechanism of the graphene growth in CVD. Decomposed hydrocarbon molecules absorb on the catalyst surface, for example, on copper and nickel. On the copper surface, Dehydrogenation of adsorbed hydrocarbon molecules occurs. Then, carbon atoms migrate and agglomerate into graphene structure. On the nickel surface, additional bulk diffusion of adsorbed carbon atoms and segregation to the surface occur because the solubility of carbon is much higher for nickel than copper.
So copper is suitable for the monolayer graphene growth, and nickel is suitable for the multilayer graphene growth. The agglomeration of carbon atoms into the honeycomb structure easily occurred at the elevated temperature because the movement of carbon atoms occurs very easily. So, for copper case, usually the growth temperature is about 1000 degree close to the melting point, so that we sometimes observe the winkle on the surface. Back to the nanoparticles. Generally, for nanoparticles, the carbon solubility tends to increase because the larger fraction of carbon atoms is expected at the surface and the surface to volume ratio is larger and the melting point decreases. These situations are similar to the catalyst surface at high temperature. During the film deposition, agglomeration of nanoparticles occurs. Then, with increasing the nanoparticle size by agglomeration, the carbon solubility decreases. So, the precipitation of graphitized carbon occurs behind the trace of the moved and agglomerated nanoparticles. We observed such a spontaneous graphitization for cobalt and nickel nanoparticles. Another important point is the metallic state of nanoparticle. Usually, nanoparticle is very reactive and is easily oxidized. But in this nanoparticle dispersed carbon system, the metallic state of nanoparticles is preserved. Encouraged by this fact, we tried lithium carbon combination. Here you see the conical structure and this is the enlarged image of this red square. This is the atomic scale image of this white square. You see the regular array of the white spots. They correspond to lithium atoms. This is the intensity line profile of the image corresponding to lithium 110 plane. The presence of lithium is also confirmed by electron energy loss spectroscopy in TEM. So, in the lithium dispersed carbon system, metallic lithium is preserved even after the exposure to air. You know, lithium is very reactive to air and usually we need glow box to handle lithium. But for this lithium carbon nanocomposite, glow box is not needed. This lithium carbon nanocomposite will be very promising candidate for the next generation of the lithium ion battery for easy and safe handling. So, our next step is the in-situ TEM observation of this lithium carbon nanocomposite during charge-discharge process. Very recently, Mr. Lin joined my laboratory from UTM. We will challenge this project together. These nanocarbon materials, including CBD graphene, can be provided through Nanotechnology Japan project. This is a national project, and our institute provides those techniques, such as synthesis of composite nanoparticles and novel compounds related for biomolecules, and Mesbauer spectroscopy measurement for the magnetic materials and also the ultra flat surface for the platform of molecular assembling. If you 
you are interested in, please visit this website. So, this is a summary. Starting from the fundamentals of carbon nanofibers, its application to AFM in the real world, and the challenge to the interconnection and battery applications were demonstrated. We are searching for the collaborators, so if you are interested in, please contact me. Thank you for your very kind attention. Okay, thank okay. you very much, uh, Prof. Tanimura. Uh, I would like to take uh, this opportunity to thank again uh, for the very interesting presentation uh, about the properties and functionalization of carbon nanomaterials. Uh, I hope that uh, everyone could learn something from this presentation. Okay, and thank you very much for your time. So uh, I would like to check for the question from uh, our Facebook comments. Okay, so uh, Prof. Tanimura, I have one question. Yeah. Uh, Prof, uh, actually in your presentation, okay, you, you show a few type of elements that can uh, combine with carbon to create graphene, carbon nanotubes. Uh, do you have any comments? Uh, is this element only specified, uh, specific to transition metal or it can be open to any type of element because uh, you know in the elemental table we have a lot of type of elements right uh, i think uh, the, the 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 example you give you only show a few type of elements do you have any comment for example any specific type of element a uh, metallic element or uh, semiconductor type of elements okay, silicon uh, germanium and so on okay uh so yeah, of course. Uh, so uh, catalyst, uh, catalyst property is uh, also similar in the CBD process. And so uh, in case of the CBD, so transition metal is very popular. But uh, so uh, sometimes we realize another type of the metals, such as low melting point metal, also act as a catalyst for the graphene growth. So uh we have s still some uh, uh uh chance to uh explore the uh, new catalyst yes okay so, thank you uh, so that's why we we are trying the many uh <laughs> many type of element, yeah. yeah okay okay prof and uh, next question actually about uh, i think the last the, the last part that uh, you, you 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 show right uh, uh application of uh, lithium carbon for the yeah. batteries application so uh, i think uh, this is quite new because uh, nowadays uh, uh, lithium is the how to say the, the the most focused element for the batteries because of the lightweight and also and also the the, the voltage energy that can be provided quite quite high yeah. so you do you have any comment uh, for example if for us from utm want to collaborate, uh, collaborate with you Okay. Yeah. Uh, what kind of uh, how to say uh, uh, field that we can support? Because uh, you know, in UTM we doesn't have much uh, advanced facilities, the, the, uh, such as the one that you show, right? Very, very advanced facilities. So, do you have any any comments on that? Because maybe we, uh, we can open more collaboration with others, uh, lecturer, uh, a researcher from UTM. Uh so so uh in in malaysia so you have many uh, much natural resources uh so uh, for example palm oil so many kind of the natural resources and i think it is usable for for so for any kind of the non-composite including battery applications so uh before uh, so in my case also so uh so before doing the this research uh, uh, lithium carbon nanocomposite research. So we didn't expect uh, nanocarbon is so nice for the uh, lithium protection, but so suddenly it happens. So uh, so unexpected unex things will be happen. So by some combination of strange metal uh, materials, 
So, uh, so, so we have many chance, and so you have many natural resources. Yes, yes. And yes. so we have some ideas. So by combining those uh, new things, so we can uh, create new materials. And yeah, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, okay, okay, bro. I, I think. Okay, another uh, one question is really from uh, Dr. Salfi from UPSI. Okay, uh, his question is, Prof, uh, you mentioned just now about the formation of graphene nanowire from copper incorporated carbon nanofiber. Speaking of application of point of view, is it easily possible? Uh, yeah, so I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. And so, so we, we want to use it as a in, uh, for the interconnection. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. So yeah, interconnection of the uh, electrical circuit. But so I also realized, so uh, in this direction, so there seems to be the problem of the resistivity, conductivity. So conductivity is seems to be still high. So because of the uh, domain size of the graphene. So this is the agglomeration of the small flakes or of course larger flakes of graf graphitized layers, but still still agglomeration of the flakes. So for the nice electrical circuit application, so I think so la much larger, so much larger uh, domain size will be in necessary. And it is very challenging. Yes, very challenging, so, yeah. So in, in this direction, of course, it is very nice direction. And another direction is uh, uh, catalyst. So mm -hmm. combination of the nanoparticle with graphene will be very nice for the catalyst. Yes. So uh, so so this is my new direction currently. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Prof. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope that later uh, we can continue to collaborate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I think that's all for Q and A. Uh, and now I would like to pass the this screen to Prof. Dr. Rafiq. Dr. Zamri, thank you so much for moderating the session and thank you for introducing Professor Masaki Tanemura to me and to our distinguished speaker today, Professor Masaki Tanemura. Thank you so very much. Arigato gozaimashita. Thank you for accepting our invitation and thank you for a great sharing session on uh, carbon related materials. Uh, and to all our viewers worldwide, thank you for watching UTM Engineering Distinguished Lecture Series. Do stay tuned because we have many more interesting lectures for you. Until next time, bye bye for now. Assalamualaikum. Thank you.